Most camcorders have difficulty recording in low light conditions, which is one of the reasons I switched to an interchangeable lens system. In my case, the Panasonic GH5. I thought it was a good compromise, even though it was a micro four thirds size sensor, which is only a quarter of the size of full frame camera, but I thought it was a good compromise because it had a lot of video options on it, including 4K video at 60p. If you're watching this video, you're probably curious about how a micro four thirds camera like the GH5 can do in extremely low light conditions in conjunction with the fastest lens available for it, the Voigtlander F0.95. Voigtlander makes a lot of focal lengths, but the one that suited my needs the best was the 10.5 millimeter, which is a 21 millimeter equivalent for full frame. Let me show you some images and you can decide for yourself what's best suited for your situation. For me, I wanted something to record video in not just indoor low light, but extreme low light like you find way out in the woods by a campfire. Astrophotography was also a bonus, so I went with a wide angle of view. So the ground I'm showing you now is about as light as what my eye is seeing now, barely visible light. It's overcast, so there's no moon and no stars. It's just the city light reflecting off the clouds. And dynamic range is an issue because the sky is not that bright. I would say the sky to my eyes is about like that. That gives you an idea of how low the light is right now as seen with the naked eye with your eyes adjusted to the dark. Again, the ground is about this dark well, maybe a little bit darker like that. This is the camera and lens stretched to the max of their abilities. So 12,800 ISO f 0.95 with a shutter speed of two frames a second. And as you can tell, it does much better than the human eye. It essentially looks like daylight, but the video is pretty much unusable at two frames a second. 25 frames a second is the slowest frame rate that you're going to want to have usable video without any motion blur. Here's a comparison of my old camcorder in exactly the same light conditions. You can't even see the sky. It's pitch black. So I do miss the lightweight feel of this camera, but I couldn't get anywhere near the images that I can with the new one. Those of you who are familiar with photography will recognize that the higher ISO levels will lead to greater noise and less image quality. So here's a few comparisons showing 25 frames per second with decreasing ISO levels. So cleaner images, but less light. Just as a comparison, this is the M's Wico 12 to 40 millimeter pro lens f 2.8. And this is at two frames a second. Not very good video. As you can see, lags really bad when I change view there. Speeding this f2.8 lens up to 10 frames per second could pass by some standards as usable enough to tell a story. However, it still doesn't compare to the Voigtlander at a lower ISO and higher frame rate. It's not even a fair comparison and the Voigtlander still wins. Just look at how the outline of the swing set differs. You may also be interested in how it performs with astrophotography and time lapses, so let me show you that as well. And so with the GH5 having the Micro Four Thirds sensor combined with this Voigtlander lens does better than the human eye, and that's recording video, which is very good. It's exactly what I wanted. Of course, the human eye has better dynamic range, but from what I understand, there are no cameras that can match the dynamic range of the human eye yet but it's everything I could hope for. I don't want to lug around gigantic full frame cameras. So hopefully you'll be seeing in some of my future hiking videos, some really low light conditions. If you're one of the few photographers that stumbled across my channel, if you have a criticism to help me improve, please keep in mind, I am not by any means a professional photographer. This is just a hobby of mine, but I certainly welcome anything that will help me become better. Hopefully this video helped you out. And if you have a Micro Four Thirds camera, hopefully it helped you decide whether or not you need to step clear down to 0.95 versus say a 2.8, which is what I had before. This is Derek reminding you, you're working too hard. See you next time.